This is ABC 15 mornings. Happy Friday here, just about six o'clock now. Nick Saletti live in studio here with you on this beautiful morning. Kaylee O'Kelly joining us from home and social distancing today. Hey, Kaylee, happy Friday. And good morning to you. Yes, we're still under this stay at home order, but still when you say the word Friday, I think a lot of people feel a little giddy about it. There's just <laughs> something about that word. It's got a nice ring to it. We do want to check in with our meteorologist Iris Hermosillo for a look at this hot, dare I say it, forecast. But you said it earlier and it's true. We're just not acclimated yet, my friend. Absolutely, and that's going to be the key as we head into the weekend. Yes, triple digits are common during the summer, but triple digits this time of year, not as common. And for as high as we're going to go next week, it's certainly not usual and very, very, um, it could potentially be very dangerous, rather, if we're not taking care of ourselves and, of course, exercising caution, avoiding being outdoors in the heat of the day, hydrating, all of those things that we typically think about in the summer, we've got to think about today and this weekend. Now, this morning, we're off to a nice and comfortable start. By this afternoon, we're flirting with the record, a high of 99 degrees in Phoenix. Or, or I should say the record is 99 degrees in Phoenix. The forecast, 98 degrees. So we're going to come really close. We'll likely see those 90s by as early as lunchtime. I'm going to break down that hour-by-hour hour forecast for you in just a few minutes ahead. Iris, thank you. Here are the latest numbers for the coronavirus pandemic in Arizona since Monday. There has been an increase of more than 700 cases and 62 deaths of the total cases. Nearly 96% of people have died. That leaves a high mortality rate of just over 4% there so far when you compare the confirmed cases. The good news, doctors have said the death rate will go down once there's widespread testing. That could begin very soon in our state. Mark Thompson is live for us this morning. And Mark, we've been waiting and, and working to try to see when exactly the state would get more testing. Absolutely, Nick. Good morning to you. And Arizona Department of Health Services Director Dr. Kara Christ, she gave the standing order saying that anyone now who even thinks that they've been exposed to the coronavirus can get tested if there are available supplies. Now, this is a bit of a change because up until now, the testing was limited to those who are at highest risk. Dr. Chris says that the change comes as testing capacity at hospitals, private medical labs, universities, and other healthcare facilities has increased. We spoke with the 23 year old who tested positive back in March after going on a ski trip with friends. It got to the point where I couldn't breathe. If you don't know you're infected and you're not practicing the necessary precautions, you could be easily spreading it. Matt Newey tells us that after his positive test, he immediately contacted his friends, but his friends, they couldn't get a test right away because they weren't showing symptoms and they didn't fall into that vulnerable category. Eventually, all four friends tested positive for the virus. And it's cases like this that has Maricopa County ramping up what they call contact tracing. That's where if someone has the virus or has been tested positive, they go back and they contact everyone who they had been in touch with and they make them aware, then they do the same and it goes on down the line. And Maricopa County has now increased staff to help test this contact tracing and they're able to do that from a, some funding through the CARES Act. Reporting live this morning, Mark Thompson, ABC 15 Arizona. Back to you. All right, so many layers to this story. Thank you very much, Mark. Doctors on the White House Task Force uh, have said for over a month that widespread testing, testing, I should say, is vital to getting the company moving again, getting it reopened. And the testing is also going to give our governor more data as he works to decide when Arizona reopens. The stay at home order remains in effect through the end of April. We'll have more data. Uh, it's not lost on me that Monday is the, the 27th, Thursday is the 31st, and a week from tomorrow is May 1st. There will be more to follow. And you know, he continues to say he's just gonna keep an eye on the data before he makes an official decision on what happens with our economy. But Maricopa County is adding staff to track locations where people do test positive for COVID-19. The county receiving nearly $400 million from the CARES Act. Part of that money will increase the number of health inspectors contributing to the county's contact tracing of COVID-19. We're currently working on scaling up our capacity from where we are now to eight to 10 times that capacity. 
And right now, the county has about two dozen health inspectors. This morning, President Donald Trump will sign a nearly half trillion dollar aid package to help small businesses. Over $300 billion goes to the Paycheck Protection Program. The rest of the money will be divided between the Small Business Administration, hospitals and coronavirus testing. Meantime, the president is expected to speak this afternoon during the White House task force briefing. Thursday, he hinted he might extend social distancing guidelines into the summer. OK, so big question. I think a lot of people wondering about this morning as well. Large co corporations that got all of the, the money from the first round of funding under the payment protection program might be forced to hand the money back over and really soon. So the Small Business Administration has issued some new guidelines as a result for borrowers, implying that if eligibility for the loan cannot be proven, the money should be returned by May 7th. PPP loans are intended for small businesses with fewer than 500 employees. 605 on this Friday across the nation. Several states, including Georgia, are taking a major step this morning, but not everyone is on board. Here's ABC's Megan Trevisan. This morning, gyms, tattoo parlors and bowling alleys in Georgia opening their doors for the first time in weeks. We're shutting down pairs in between the other lanes. So at the closest anybody will actually be to your group is 11 feet. The state's governor easing coronavirus restrictions beginning today, giving businesses the green light to reopen. But the reaction from small business owners is mixed. We're putting, you know, people over profit at the end of the day. Some saying they aren't taking any chances. I just would never feel comfortable if anything ever happened to any of my clients because they came in my salon. While others say they are eager to safely get back to business. We are not using our snack bar. We're not using our lounge. Even President Trump, who is encouraging states to ease restrictions, is calling out Georgia's governor for opening up too much too soon. I said, you do what you think is best. But if you ask me, am I happy about it? I'm not happy about it. Safety recommendations during the pandemic are constantly changing. Just yesterday, one study said states like Texas and South Carolina could begin to reopen by June 1st. But 24 hours later, distancing measures should stay in place for at least another six and a half weeks. My book is already full. And Georgia is not alone in its quest to reopen. Salons in Oklahoma already have full schedules beginning today while Tennessee promises to lift restrictions by Thursday. Everybody needs to go back to work. Everybody wants to go back to work. And in Texas, restrictions may still be in place, but some businesses say they can't stay closed another day. We have to open. We have to survive. Megan Tavrizian, ABC News, New York. Thank you, Megan. So with millions of Americans suddenly losing their jobs or being furloughed, of course, the real estate industry is taking its own kind of hit right now. Our John Genovese joining us live from Phoenix. John, obviously new home sales are taking a tumble at this point. Yeah, and Kelly, you can really understand why we're seeing this right now, given the uncertainty that's out there for people. And just yesterday, the Commerce Department announced that new home sales in the U.S. as of last month were down more than 15 percent. Now, here in Arizona, we are certainly feeling that as well. I talked with Tina Tambor of the Cromford Report, which tracks our local market. She says contracts going into escrow, that's when an initial commitment is made to buy, are down at nearly 38 percent since the last week of February. Still, she says the Valley was one of the hottest real estate markets nationwide before all of this and the luxury market, those being homes over $500,000, is being hit hardest. Other areas like Gilbert, Chandler, South Phoenix and parts of the West Valley are still staying active. The Valley still a frenzy. You just have still more under contract than what's available for sale, even despite the drop in contract activity we've seen over the last six and seven weeks. So it's again, we were so hot. It would take us much longer as our uh, for greater Phoenix. It will take this city longer to get into what we would consider a balanced or even a buyer's market. And even despite this pandemic, she says half the homes going under contract last week were only on the market for around 16 days. So we are still certainly seeing some movement, but as to how long it'll take to get back to where we were before all of this, that depends, she says, on how long this pandemic presses on. But her best bet is at least several months, guys.
Okay, John Genovese reporting live for us. Real quick, I, I misspoke earlier. I meant to say the survival rate was 96% for those new COVID-19 cases here in Arizona. In the meantime, the hardest hit part of our state, the Navajo Nation, receiving some much needed help. Care packages, food, and firewood were delivered to 250 members of this community, many of them living in the remote areas here. Tonight, a 57-hour curfew goes into effect until Monday morning. Well, this pandemic certainly bringing a massive disruption to our lives. Some jobs, turns out, are less recession proof. So we're going to take a look at the five industries that will feel a long term impact. Plus, getting back to work, tens of thousands of Arizonans filing for unemployment this month. We will highlight a new tool that could help some people find a new career. ABC 15 Desert Drive Time, sponsored by Accident Law Group. 613 on this Friday. This is a live look with our ADOT cameras this morning. This is the I-10 and 43rd Avenue there, our Desert Drive Times there. Looking pretty good so far as we get this Friday kicked off and a nice day at that. Looks like no major traffic, no major delays, uh, no major accidents or anything like that. We will have much more of your Desert Drive Time sponsored by Accident Law Group coming up throughout the morning. Meantime, state leaders are calling on Arizona to take extra precautions this fire season. When camping, hiking, driving, even taking care of their lawns, officials say they're trying to find new ways to fight fires while trying to keep from putting their crews in danger and possibly spreading the coronavirus. This is going to be a very challenging time, but I want to assure the residents of uh, Arizona that the, the Arizona Fire Service is prepared and they're up for the challenge of this year. And here's one example of some efforts being made. The crew practicing social distancing you can see on the ground there at a briefing near Blaze, Sparked, and Superior this week. Fire officials say they will look to use resources like aerial support and cutting down the amount of men and women they use on the ground here. Let's bring in meteorologist Iris Hermosillo right now because, Iris, we talk about this all the time, and we are entering that part of our season here where the weather gets hotter, it's drier, and then you factor in the winds here, and it could be a really dangerous situation. It certainly can be, and when we get those stronger winds, that fire danger just goes up because it's so easy for those fires to spread. Now, the good news is today those winds are backing off. After a breezy day yesterday, expect lighter winds in the valley today between 5 and 10 miles an hour and just occasional breezes near 20 miles an hour in northern Arizona. Temperatures, though, are heating up as high pressure builds in. Right now, we're in the 60s, so it's comfortable at this point. But the sun came up just before 6 a.m., and so I think our temperatures are going to start to climb from here forward. Get ready for it and get outside soon if you want to enjoy the 60s while we've got them. It's 69 officially at Phoenix Sky Harbor, down to 48 right now in Prescott. Not many freezes up north. The only spot below freezing, the Grand Canyon in the 20s. Flagstaff at 40 degrees, 55 in Payson, and 72 at Lake Havasu. Look at these high temperatures today. Another very warm day across the state. We're talking highs in the 70s to 80s across that northern portion of our state. 82 for a high today in Sedona, 70 in Flagstaff and in Window Rock. Mid to upper 90s from Bullhead City to Quartzsite. And we could see the triple digits today in Yuma with Phoenix topping out at 98 degrees. Now, that's a change from yesterday's forecast. Today's data coming in just slightly cooler for today. Not a huge difference, but we're still looking at highs in the upper 90s across the Valley. It's just Phoenix may stay just shy of that record high for today. Look for a high of 98 in Phoenix, but we'll likely see 99 in Buckeye, Surprise, Goodyear, and Levine. Those will be the warmer spots today. Mid 90s today in Apache Junction, Cave Creek up to 94 degrees this afternoon. So here's how our temperatures climb. I think we're going to see the 90s as early as lunchtime today. So plan accordingly. We're going up from here forward, 91 degrees by noon. Then we'll see that peak temperature of 98 in that four o'clock hour and then we'll still likely be in the 90s by around 8 o'clock. So if you don't want to venture out, maybe order in. Today might be a good day to order in food. And again, we're going to be on record watch here through the afternoon. 98 for a high today, 99 for a record. That was set back in 1987. In fact, we've hit that high temperature on three occasions on this date. So that's the record. Again, we're going to come really close today. This morning, I want to give a shout out to Grimaldi's Pizzeria. They've got six locations in their 
offering delivery and pickup. We're open Arizona trying to support our local businesses as they also support the community. They donated uh, a pizzas to a local hospital recently. And so we want to give them a shout out for that, but also remind you that if you want to order in today, they might be a good option. 98 for a high today, triple digits this weekend, likely record setting heat by Sunday and next week, 105 by Thursday. Iris Sankey developing right now a stabbing investigation in the north part of the valley. This happened earlier this morning near 91st and Peoria Avenues. Peoria police telling us two people who knew each other got into a fight, one of them stabbing the other. That person has serious injuries, and right now officers are trying to piece everything together and locate that other person. Well, we do want to take a look at some of your other top stories on this Friday morning. Several governors are starting to worry about stimulus funding restrictions right now. Each state is getting at least $1.2 billion, but guidelines from the Treasury Department say that money can only be used for the medical emergency caused by this outbreak. Dozens of American oil companies could go bankrupt. This is prices fall to historic lows. These particular companies, the shale oil companies, use hydraulic fracturing to get shale oil from Rock and Stone. The method, though, is very expensive, making it tough to turn a profit. And Scottsdale-based Axon is working to protect first responders during this pandemic. The company donating 12,000 medical masks and 300 gallons of hand sanitizer to the incident management team with Phoenix Police. Oh, and that is going to go so far there. Thank you for that donation. Yes. Hey, finding a job, not the easiest thing to do right now, given our current situation, but there is one resource getting a lot of traction right now. Best Companies A to Z has been uh, around for nearly two decades, but with fallout from COVID-19, they've seen an increase in the need for connecting job seekers to businesses. Uh, management says not only do they link you to the companies, they also provide you with other resources like help with resumes. Well, considering our economy and where it is right now because of this pandemic, something to think about if you are in job search mode. Some industries are a lot more vulnerable than others during an economic crisis. According to a study done by the personal finance company Smart Asset, arts and entertainment is one of the top five industries most vulnerable to a recession. A recession is two or more quarters, which is six months, of, of which the, the gross domestic product shrink. The company's Mark LeCastro says the next three to six months could be difficult for everyone. The stock market is, is very volatile right now. Businesses are furloughing or laying off employees. Um, there was a record, I believe it was 22 million people filed for unemployment recently. And a recent study looked at which communities will be impacted most. We looked at uh, Census Bureau data for all of the 50 states and also the 100 largest or most populous U.S. cities. And that gave us a really good indicator on, on these five vulnerable industries and where it's going to be impacted more than the other. Besides arts and entertainment, the other vulnerable industries include mining, oil and gas, food services, administrative services, and waste management. The experts say those working in these industries should start looking ahead. If they are lucky enough to work from home and, and still maintain a, a paycheck, it's really important now more than ever to start saving for an emergency fund. And if possible, set up an emergency fund to cover three to six months of expenses in a savings account. It is a jewel in the desert, always catering to dietary restrictions. It's now catering to those struggling to put food on the table. How they are making this happen and saying, we're open, Arizona. We're open, Arizona, highlighting restaurants in our state, working to keep the kitchens open and people working and the community fed. It's our part of our greater initiative we're calling the Rebound Arizona. And as we all respond to and recover from the coronavirus, today we're showing you a jewel in the desert near 40th Street and Thomas. Jules Bakery and Cafe. You'll be hard pressed to find a closer family than this. It's always been a family run business. We take care of our staff like they are family. Most of them actually legitimately are family. That's owner Justine Dockel, alongside mom and founder Julie, who started Jules Bakery and Cafe nearly seven years ago in farmer's markets, sharing their love of food after one of their own had to make some dietary changes. 
My sister was diagnosed with celiac disease when she was 10. Uh, she really stopped eating food because food on the grocery shelves was pretty much garbage. It's no good. Jules caters to all kinds of food allergies without sacrificing flavor. We're known for our fried chicken. Uh, we won some awards for that. To them, staying open is not about their bottom line. It's about helping others. There's not a lot of food options for people with food allergies that is that safe food, especially for our customers. There's stuff that they can't get at grocery stores right now. Like most restaurants, they've had to make some changes, moving to pickup and takeout only. They've also had to cut staff. I was really worried at first. I stayed up a lot and I cried a lot. But their focus continues to be on helping others, offering a $2 kids breakfast to help students who rely on meals from school. They're also helping other restaurant workers who may be out of a job. She made family meals that were free so they could just come in and pick up meals. And taking it back to their farmer market roots. Inside, you'll find a mini market selling locally made items like honey, salsa, pasta, coffee, chips and more. All profits going to local companies who no longer have a place to sell their products. So from their family to yours. We're Jules Bakery Cafe. We're open Arizona. So if you know of a restaurant doing amazing things, let us know about it. Fill out the form at abc15.com slash open. And for resources on jobs, food, financing, or moments of hope, head to abc15.com slash rebound. And they're doing a great job. Got to check them out. Justin Pazera, thank you. Next at 630, is it about the dates or the data? The country's former Health and Human Services Secretary sits down with us to talk about when the nation should reopen, plus protecting you by asking those tough questions. The Let Joe Know team finding out why some people are waiting weeks and weeks for unemployment benefits.